What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the hot topic, which is GitHub Copilot versus Tab9 as GitHub has finally gone to general release. So if you're new to the channel, my name is James. I usually do topics on things such as Next.js and the Jamstack, but this felt like a video I should make. If you've been living under a rock for a while, GitHub Copilot has taken the world by storm. It went to a very specific set of developers, although a lot of people did get invited when it was in this closed state for testing. Now, if you're wondering what Copilot is, it is the GitHub equivalent of tab nine. And basically they just put all of the open source projects in a blender, made a model, and that's held by Microsoft. At the time, it was free for everybody to use who was invited to the product. However, now it has gone to GA, which means they're going to charge the dollary dues for everybody to start using it. So the pricing is pretty reasonable. It's $8.33 a month if you pay upfront for a year. And it's also free if you contribute to open source, but it has to be popular which I think just means you can't just, you know, open source your personal website and be like, I'm an open source maintainer or contributor and I need to for free. So with that being said, is it really worth the money? Well, I used GitHub Copilot for, I would say on and off since the pretty much I got invited in. A lot of the time I would turn it off because I don't use it on stream. I don't use it for YouTube and I don't use it at work but it was super useful when I didn't have to remember a specific task, such as how do I do a map with an index? It would just show up and, and then I could continue on or something that's really obscure that I only use like once a month. Copilot would take care of it and I wouldn't have to worry about opening that tab in my browser history. Apart from that, I never really used any of the other features like typing in a comment and that would allow you to see all different kinds of code and options, but overall it was a really handy tool. Now, would I pay $8.33 a month or 10 bucks a month for the product? The answer is no. I don't think it's worth $10 a month for me, but then again, it could be worth $10 to you, depending if you're not willing to have a browser tab open, a stack overflow question answered, or something like that. Now moving over, Tab9 has been around for a long time and they were pretty much the original sort of AI code generator or code assistant or whatever you want to call it. And they have slowly been working on various new products. Although I wouldn't really call them products per se, but and essentially what they've done is they've trained their model specifically on each language instead of the way that Microsoft's done it, which is just funnel everything into a giant model and use that model to tell everybody how to code. Tab9 has taken it into consideration and said, well, we could get a really good performant Python AI generator if we only feed Python to it because a Python developer only cares about Python. Now, Tab9 does have a free option, and their free option is actually pretty good if you just need those hints and tips for very short pieces of code. So one thing that Tab9 does offer is this sort of roll your own, host your own version. If you're inside a giant company, but you want to be able to use Tab9, you can hold it on a local server behind a firewall and it never goes out into the cloud. Depending on what your compliance or, you know, reason of privacy is, or you can use their cloud-based stuff, which again is just connected to a giant model. Um, and it doesn't matter where you use it. So unlike GitHub's Copilot, where you have to use Visual Studio Code, if you use IntelliJ, or if you use Atom, which rest in peace, or Sublime, or Eclipse, or whatever, all of those Tab9 can be used with all of them, which makes it really nice if you're not a Visual Studio Code developer. And another thing that I think really allows Tab9 to kind of stand out is the private repo modeling. It allows Tab9 to hook up to your private repositories and build a model around those. So 
For example, if you were Facebook and you had a bunch of private repos, you could hook that up and it would allow developers who just began on Facebook to kind of get up to speed faster knowing all the different pieces and it would give hints based around your code versus what's going on in the world. So what do you think? Do you think Tab9 or GitHub Copilot is going to be the king of AI? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe because we'll be doing more Jamstack content, web development, and SaaS building in the future.